Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be doing a little diagnosing and a repairing of a furnace. So a lot of you that are watching that are subscribed probably watch more for our camp builds. Um, this furnace is in a camp, but we're going to be focused on it. We get a lot of questions this time of year in regards to furnaces. Not so much in our camps, just because our camps are built very different than what the RVs are. And so... They don't see as much abuse and work and, and those type of things just because of the insulation values that we use, the wood burning stove, those types of things. So we don't see near as many issues with um, the furnaces in the camps, but every now and again we get one. So you camp owners, this will be beneficial for you also. Um, but we see this time of year, we generally see probably 20 plus furnaces a week. So we work on a lot of furnaces. Um, so I'm going to show you a simple trick, probably one of the most common things that we see. I mean, we see everything from mice to insects to cell switches, all sorts of stuff. So biggest thing is cleanliness. Um, if you got a furnace that doesn't work, don't hesitate to get your air compressor, put your air nozzle on, blow that exhaust tube out. That's, that's a pretty easy thing to do. If that doesn't work, then you can dive in a little deeper. And that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna diagnose a furnace that just wants to blow, which is a common thing that we see with them. And, and a lot of it has to do with dirt. Um, but we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna pull this cover off and be able to access this. Now, some of you might not have this style. Um, you could have this exact same furnace, but it could be installed a little bit different. If you've just got an exhaust port on the side of your camp, that means that it's been installed inside the trailer and just the exhaust is coming out. I prefer this method just because it's super easy to work on, easy to diagnose. Whereas the other style, you might have to crawl under your jackknife sofa, um, in a cupboard, cabinet, something that way. So. Anyways, this one we're just going to pull the cover off and I'll show you one of the common things that we're seeing with the furnaces. All right, so I've got these screws pulled out. There's just the four screws. You can take this um, heat register, this exhaust tube off. You don't necessarily have to to access this door. Okay, you're just going to pull that off. I will say if you're trying to run your furnace without this, they don't like to run very well. So, and you'll hear it as we start this one up without it. They will run to where you can diagnose them. Um, but yeah, if you run them for, for long periods of time and you'll hear this one won't sound like it's burning really clean. And that's why is because it don't have that exhaust tube on. Okay, just a couple basic things to point out here. We do have an, a reset switch. This is an on and off switch. Make sure that that's on. If you're having issues, it's not blowing, it's not doing anything when you turn the thermostat on. Chances are there's something going on power-wise. So either you have a blown fuse inside the trailer or your reset's off. Okay, so I would check both of those very first. Um, if you can get it to blow and stuff, that's a good sign that you've got power to it. So this one, I've already got the thermostat set to on. And so I've got this off so I can turn it on and it's going to blow, okay? The process the furnace does is it's gonna blow for 20 seconds, um, purging that combustion chamber, make sure there's no gas or anything in there before it sends spark or anything, okay? So it'll blow for 30 seconds and then it'll go through its process. Now what it's going to do first is it's going to send signal to this cell switch. Now where they're located could be different but they're all going to be on this blower housing so you've got a blower housing on this side also a blower housing on this side this is the fan that's going to be sending air through the trailer okay so they put it on this side what it does is it's got a little flapper on it um, i'll show you a picture of it but it's got a little flapper that once that fan starts to blow that opens up and it sends signal back to the circuit board saying hey we've we've got you know the fans blowing we're ready to go but if that signal never gets sent back to that circuit board it's never going to open that gas valve and all you're going to feel is cold air it's going to do this three times it's going to blow cold air 
If it doesn't ignite, it's going to try again and it's gonna try this three times. If it doesn't light on the third time, it's going to go into lockout, meaning it's not gonna do anything until you reset it. To reset it, all you gotta do is turn it off, turn it back on um, on your thermostat. Okay, this particular furnace and a lot of the others, they'll actually give you a code. There's an LED that flashes on that circuit board. On this housing, it gives us a, a schematic as far or a diagnostic code of what it's doing. So, you know, if I get three flashes, that's going to tell me that I'm in lockout and it's probably not going to be doing anything. If I get two flashes, it's going to tell me a flame fault, meaning either the fans aren't blowing or we just can't light because something's not right there. So it'll give you kind of some ideas of where to start. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to replicate a bad cell switch here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this on. Okay, and I'm going to pull one of these wires off to the cell switch. Maybe I'll grab the camera so you, that you can see this um, circuit board. Okay, so you can see this circuit board. It's already giving me a flash. Okay, even though it's blowing, it's never going, you're never going to hear a click for ignition. You're not going to hear a click of the gas valve open. It's not going to do anything. It's just going to blow. Um, and then it's going to give us our fault. Okay, whereas if I plug this back in, okay, my LED shuts off. Pretty soon you're going to hear a click of the ignition and it's going to light right up. Okay, so it went through the whole process, but like I say, it's not going to do anything if that cell switch is bad. It's going to blow but it's never gonna ignite. Okay, so the easiest way that I found to test these is I can pull this off. Okay, I'm gonna pull both of these off. Maybe I'll just turn it on while I'm showing you. Let me move this camera a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna turn this on. It's going to blow, okay? But obviously that cell switch isn't going to work because it's not hooked up. So what I like to do is I just take one of these 10 amp, just square fuses, okay? Because the terminals are pretty small on these cables, I'll take my tin snips and I just trim a little bit away from them so that those can slide on. And I can slide these terminals onto this fuse. Let me restart that. Okay, if I slide these onto this fuse, this is gonna tell me if I got a bad cell switch. If it lights and it hasn't lit before with doing this, that means I've got a new cell, or I need a new cell switch. What happens is if you got pets or anything, so as you can see, it lit, so that tells me, hey, the cell switch was bad. Okay, problem solved. These are about 10 bucks, super cheap. But what happens is, especially if you got pets or anything else, I mean, they just get dirty as you travel down the road. Most of you probably aren't going to the Walmart parking lot. You're probably going down some dirt roads and some things. You'll get dust, and what happens is that dust will build up on that flapper and on that wheel, and it'll get to where it don't open all the way um, and it don't close all the way. And so it gets to where it won't open. So that's a very common thing. I, I'm hopeful that this will help a lot of you. And like I say, it's simple. Whereas if you took it to me, um, most of your RV replaces, you're going to be an hour minimum. And this is, you know, a 10 minute job to test this out. So anyways, if you have any questions about replacing the cell switch or anything that way, you should have um, a model number that's got a sticker on this housing okay that should tell you what furnace you have so if you call any rv um, place they should be able to get you whatever parts you need but just give them that model number tell them you need a cell switch and yeah it's as easy as pulling two wires off two screws out put a new cell switch in and you're done so but i would like i say verify that you have power first verify that it blows if it blows um, they're fairly easy. I don't replace a ton of circuit boards. I mean, we do every now and again. 
um, limit switches, motors and stuff. But I would say by far, this is probably the most common thing um, that I see with the furnaces. So I'll do some videos of some of the other things, how to diagnose them um, to where if this isn't the thing that's causing issues with yours, we can help you track down what is. Um, if you do have this style furnace, another thing that I would look at is see how this circuit board is sitting on an angle. Um, a lot of the early models of this, they were sitting flat. And what would happen is they would get condensation on that circuit board and it would end up shorting that board. So there is a recall. They send a little bracket to help, you know, slope that to where any condensation or anything will run off that board. Um, and not cause issues that way so that's another thing to check if you have this style furnace so anyways guys i hope that this helps um like i say this probably isn't for most of our camp owners just because most of you probably aren't going to have the issues that most of the rvs have so but anyways hope this is educational and it saves you some money so thanks for watching